On this episode of How to Make Dinner, I'm showing you how to make this delightful baked orzo with cauliflower and chickpeas. It's a real winner. You're gonna wanna stick around. Lots to talk about today. Number one, you might be wondering what this little beauty is. This is one of our new How to Make Dinner aprons. Now, the thing about this apron is it's kind of not the longest apron in the world, you can probably see, but it is super heavy duty. It's like this thick canvas and it has not two, but three pockets in the front. So, you know, you can keep a bunch of things in there, wooden spoons. I should probably load up for this, hey? You can keep like your thermometer, Keep your thermo pop there. What else? Tasting spoons. Just, just, you can keep it all. This, this might get a bit awkward. I might take those out. Yeah, I'll take those out. But um, anyway, these aprons are now available and they're on my website, howtomakedinner.com. And you can buy one and have one of your own. There are also very beautiful organic cotton tote bags. So these are, they're not like a huge grocery bag. I think it's six ounce is the, is the size, but they fit quite a bit of stuff. I, th I feel like they're the perfect size for like a bakery trip or just like picking up a few things at the market. They would look really good with some leafy greens poking out of the top. And it's just the, the, the organic cotton fabric is super soft and just really airy and light and summery. I feel like it's just like the perfect summer companion. So, and you can roll it up really tight, stick it in your bag. So you never have to use plastic bags at the grocery store. So that's also online on the website. Have at her. <laughs> Before we get started, I wanted to crack a beverage. So this is a non-alcoholic sour beer that I found recently from a uh, brewery in Montreal and I've been on like a 90 day booze free journey <laughs> just for fun mostly and it's been great actually and I've I've been I, I do love my beer so I've been sampling quite a few non-alcoholic beers and now I've got a bunch of opinions on which ones are good and not good but I thought I'd give this raspberry sour one a try it's really beautiful isn't it Oh yeah, that is nice. So sour beer lends itself perfectly to being non-alcoholic just because there's so much other flavor going on in there. It's really nice. Cheers. I'm pretty excited to be sharing an actual recipe with you today. I feel like I don't do straight up recipes very often, but I've made this one and it's so good and it's just such a great little like one pan wonder. And I'm gonna put the full recipe up on the blog too. So that'll be there. So I've got some cauliflower here. You know, everyone loves cauliflower these days, including me. Uh, I'm just gonna hack it up really pretty casually. I'm not gonna pay too much attention to how it's done. Just big, big old chunks and small chunks and little bits. So this is 400 grams of cauliflower. Just going to throw that in a bowl. And next up, I'm going to dice a small onion. If you watch this show a lot, you'll know that I'm not usually like super, super recipe focused. I'm, I often just talk about what you can do with certain ingredients and how you can make something out of random scraps in your fridge. But once in a while, I do like to do an actual recipe because if it's simple enough and delicious enough, it's something that you can just have in your back pocket and just bust out any old time. And I definitely feel like this one because it's pretty healthy, super easy, and it's really, really delish. 
is one that I'm gonna bust out on a regular basis. And I'm probably gonna Google my own recipes and follow the recipe to a T because I, I do that sometimes. <laughs> I do that with the chicken and brown rice instant pot thing. I also do that with my compost cake. If you haven't made the compost cake, it's kind of out of this world. Um, onions are going into the bowl. And then I'm going to get some ginger in there. I say two tablespoons of ginger in the recipe, but I don't think that too much ginger is ever a real problem. So be generous. And yeah, I'm being lazy about peeling this. I'm a ginger peeler. I know it's not a very popular philosophy these days, but I like to get rid of that tough skin. So I'm just gonna grate it on a box grater. And then I'm gonna get four cloves of garlic. Give them a little smash so that the skin comes off easily. And I'm not really that fussed about the, the garlic being super, super minced, but seeing as I have the grater out, I'm just gonna kind of rip it through the grater as well. I also use my tomato coconut soup recipe often. I'll, I know it's, it's so simple, there's barely any ingredients, but I still just like to refer to the <laughs> recipe for that one. Again, so simple, one pot, everybody loves it. It's just one of those, one of those soups you can really count on, you know? Okay, so that's all grated. I'm just gonna dump that into the bowl with the cauliflower and the onion. A couple of more things are going in here. About three tablespoons of olive oil. I'm not measuring. And about a quarter teaspoon of chili flakes. Not measuring. I am gonna measure the coriander powder. Uh, so it's two teaspoons of ground coriander. And one teaspoon of salt. And I know this is also as unpopular as peeling ginger, <laughs> measuring salt, but I measure salt now. It's a new thing that I do. I didn't used to do it and now I do it. And I find that if I use a measured amount of salt, I get consistent results. So I do it. And then I'm gonna take some tomato paste, three tablespoons, not measured, and just squeeze it into that bowl as well. One, two, three. Now, all this time, my oven should have been preheating on full blast. Not only is my oven preheating at full blast, but I'm gonna take a large oven proof pan. This could be like a brownie tin, or it could be a stainless steel pan like this. It just has to have sides, and it has to be wide enough to fit all the cauliflower in one layer. You don't want it to be too wide that there's too much extra space around the cauliflower because then the garlic will burn, but you do need it to be all in one layer. So I'm gonna get this into the oven preheating as well. And while that's all heating, I'm just gonna give this a really good toss with my hands. It might seem a bit weird to put the tomato paste in with the cauliflower, but when tomato paste has like a bit of a toast on it, the flavor gets way nicer. It just kind of cooks the rawness out of it. So you'll often see tomato paste being added in a braised dish kind of early on so that it gets a little color. Uh, this is kind of the same concept. When you're making a brown stock, like a dark brown meat stock, you'll often roast the vegetables and the bones in the oven and you'll add the tomato paste to the bones as well and kind of toss that so that the tomato paste gets brown, the vegetables get brown, the meat bones get brown. It's just, it's just really, really caramelizing and getting more flavor out of everything. So that's all tossed. I'm gonna wash my hands. Now that the oven is really hot and the pan is really hot, I'm just gonna take the pan out, dump the cauliflower mixture in and throw it back in really quickly. That 
that's the sound you want. And then just leave it in there for a good 10 minutes. It might take 12, 15 minutes, depending on how hot your oven is. It's just a matter of getting some nice browning on the cauliflower. The cauliflower has been in the oven for about 12-ish minutes, and I'm gonna pull it out. Yeah, so you can see that there's some little roasty bits around the edges, and some of these little floret pieces are nice and dark. It's not super, super deeply roasted, but it's good for what we're doing here. Next, I'm gonna add the orzo. So this is only 150 grams of orzo, which works out to about three quarters of a cup or slightly more, like just under a cup, which is not very much. And this whole thing feeds about six people, which means every serving only has about 25 grams of orzo in it. So it's pretty low carb if you're into that kind of thing. But at the same time, you're eating pasta and you're feeling so satisfied. So that's going in and then in addition to that i'm going to add a can of chickpeas that have been drained and rinsed and then i'm going to add two cups of stock so if you're going veggie use veggie stock this is actually chicken because it's what i had but it's better than bouillon so it's important to note that this has some salt in it i made the recipe based on better than bouillon. So if you're using nice homemade stock that doesn't have salt, you might need to adjust the salt a little bit. So what I do is I just pour it in, give it a stir. And then even though it's not cooked yet, you can still kind of get an idea of the seasoning just by tasting the liquid. <laughs> but at this stage, it should be slightly salty. The liquid should taste a little bit salty. And that's because the orzo hasn't absorbed the liquid yet by the time the orzo absorbs it will the, the salt will season the orzo perfectly and everything will just be just right mm, so yeah it's like ooh, is it gonna be too salty no it's not <laughs> okay the last thing is kind of optional I guess but I think it's so so good and that's a quarter cup of raisins or any kind of dried fruit you could use apricots, golden raisins, anything like that. And I'm just gonna stir it again. <laughs> and then at this point, you just want everything to be nice and distributed. So there's little raisins everywhere. There's cauliflower everywhere. There's orzo everywhere. And then I'm just gonna pop a lid on it. And if you're using a brownie tin or something else, you can just wrap it in tin foil or put another baking sheet on top. And then I'm going to put it back in the oven, reduce the oven to 375, and then leave it in there for about 20 minutes. And now we wait. You want to talk about the aprons again? <laughs> it's been 20 minutes. I'm just going to reach in here and pull off the lid. I'm just going to let that cook and get a little bit crispy for 10 more minutes. I'm just about to pull the baked delicious cauliflower orzo from the oven and I have some almonds here that I've just basically done a really rough chop to and then I've got some chives from my garden but this could be any nut or seed and any herb you really want I think it would be really good with parsley really good with cilantro something fresh not like a woody herb but like a fresh leafy herb and then nut wise we had this last night with walnuts and it was delicious they could be toasted or untoasted totally up to you toasted nuts just have a more prominent nutty flavor but I kind of also love untoasted nuts sometimes because it's like they're just mild and creamy so these are raw almonds all right Check it out. Look at this beauty. The orzo is fully cooked and some bits are a little bit crispy because they've been on top. And the raisins have kind of floated to the top and the cauliflower sort of floated to the top and got a touch more crispy. 
And I'm just gonna take the herbs and nuts and basically just chuck them on top. Because I was outside and found some nice calendula flowers, I figured why not scatter a few of those on top too. These ones you can just eat the petals, not the actual flower. They're just pretty, you know? Edible flowers are fun sometimes. So this orzo definitely has like a lot of influence from a lot of different places. Like orzo is kind of definitely a Mediterranean thing, like a Greek thing, but then the coriander and the raisins have kind of a bit of a Moroccan vibe. So I would definitely say that it's got lots of influences, but it's certainly not traditional anything. So let's give it a taste. Oh, so good. <laughs> it's going to be really hot. Okay, it's really hot. I definitely just burned the roof of my mouth, but it's so, so delicious. It's got a real punch of ginger. It's got a little bit of heat from the chili flakes and it's perfectly seasoned. So I'm a happy camper. What more can I say? You'll find the whole recipe for this on howtomakedinner.com and you'll also find links to buy these aprons and these tote bags at the same place, howtomakedinner.com. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in for another episode and I hope you enjoyed this one. I really think that you should make this. <laughs> it's so good, it's so easy, it's really good for you. Oh, and bonus, it's really, really good cold. Next day, bring it to a picnic or whatever you're doing. Eat it cold, eat it hot. It's just, it's just great. That's it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.